Sonic, the heart of your system. In the previous two videos, we were talking about AMD Epic overclocking. So we overclocked the AMD Epic 7600 and 32 core CPU on a single socket super micro board. Now I tried to do the same on a dual socket super micro board. We had actually quite a lot of issues with those super micro boards. I think it's just mainly a socket contact problem. So we tried to mount the CPU, I don't know, 10, 20 times. But even then we did not, yeah, we were not able to get the CPU to boot on all memory channels. Sometimes only one socket was working. So sometimes we had a CPU in one socket, it worked. Once we um, put in the second CPU in the second socket, no, nothing booted anymore. Tried it with two of those boards, we were not successful. So we changed over to an ASUS server. So it's an ASUS RS700AE9RS12-1U server. So it's actually a, qu a quite thin unit. Has a lot of SSD trays in the front and that's also where I mounted my system SSD. It's a very interesting product, especially when we will take a look at the VRMs later, which was actually quite impressive and also very interesting. So the server obviously has two SP3 sockets, which we need to put in our two 32 core AMD Epic CPUs. Then we have 32 DIMM slots, but we will only occupy half of them. So we will use 16 of the DIMM slots, but we will put in um, 2,666 MHz crucial 8 GB dual ranked DIMMs, so it should not really make a difference if we occupy all, all slots with single ranked modules or if we occupy half of them with dual ranked modules, should actually be the same performance and there is nothing higher performing available than 2,666 MHz unfortunately. Also, we have the opportunity in the BIOS of the server to adjust uh, the memory frequency, but we can change it to 2933 MHz in the BIOS, but it does not apply because all the CPUs are locked. So unfortunately, AMD locked the memory speed on all those uh, CPUs, similar to what Intel is always doing, but we're losing actually quite a lot of performance on this. So yeah, it's unfortunately AMD locked them down there, but there's nothing we can do about that. So going back to the server, the server is powered by two redundant 800 watt 80 plus platinum PSUs, which is actually quite impressive. So we can technically use only one PSU to power the whole server, even with 64 cores, it works fine. But only stock, obviously, we tried to overclock the CPU a little bit, step by step. And then we figured out that we would essentially or eventually trigger OCP of the single PSU. Then we plugged in the second PSU as well and it worked fine because then we have a total of 1600 watt and we know from experience that the 4G overclocked AMD EPIC 32 core will consume peak of around 500 watts so having 1600 watt in total should be absolutely fine. What's actually quite nice is that we have a debug LED in the back of the server so whenever we're trying to boot when we try to do some memory adjustments we can always check what the current status is can see if we have some trouble booting that's a quite, a quite nice feature to have. Also in the back we have obviously all the connectors, uh, USB, uh, we have the VGA port for the internal graphics um, from the server, but we also have PCI Express slots with angled connectors. So I was able to mount an NVIDIA GTX 1050 uh, Ti, which I picked because it doesn't need additional power. It's just consuming the power from the PCI Express slot and having a yeah, dedicated um, GPU saves some performance from the CPU as well. It's not really much, but we just want to be sure that we have the maximum CPU power without any limitations. So as I pointed out earlier, the VRM on this server board was really surprising and also really solid. So we have two times six phases for the CPU. So we have six phases per CPU and those are international rectifier um, 3555M, which is very common. It's a very common power stage, but also very powerful. So we have around 60 amps per phase as max. Typically, we don't have a heatsink on them. It's not really necessary if the server is mounted in a rack because you have all the airflow going across the board. It's going underneath the board as well, which helps quite a lot. Obviously, then going over the CPU through the PSU and all that to cool the whole server. But normally, the CPU is not overclocked. They don't consume so much power. So six phases of those um, power stages is quite good. And then we saw that there is a massive amount of phases in the middle area of the server. So we have four additional phases on the bottom for the memory, then we have eight phases in the middle for the memory and additional four phases on top for the memory. So we have 16 phases just for memory power, which 
kind of makes sense considering that we have 32 slots which can be occupied by those massive memory sticks uh, like very high density I think now what do we have 128 gigabyte or 256 gigabyte even um, per stick so obviously they consume quite some power so we, you need um, solid VRM if you would occupy all those slots then we also have two additional phases on the bottom for SOC voltage for the bottom CPU and additional um, two SOC phases for the top CPU. Obviously, because it's a server board, it only has the minimum necessary required features in the BIOS, so it's not possible to change the voltage in the BIOS itself. That's why, again, we used the Elmer EVC, which is an I2C device. We can directly hook up to a connector that's already on the board. It's something like VRM tests connector or something like that. It's labeled. You just need those three pins for I2C and then we can directly hook up the Elmore EVC, disable OCP, very convenient, we can adjust the core voltage, so that's all we need for the overclocking. So the goal of this whole project was obviously to achieve an incredible Cinebench R15 score, if possible also break the overall Cinebench record. But for that we, yeah, we need kind of um, sub-zero temperatures, so ideally we would use liquid nitrogen on the both CPUs, but it's not so easy because all AMD Ryzen based CPUs, they have a lot of problems going sub-zero. For Pinnacle Ridge or for the old AMD Threadripper, um, especially if you use like a Senate Extreme, everything is fixed. There is like a special BIOS on there where you can go sub-zero without any problems. But typically once the temperature sensor of the CPU would go sub-zero, it, it just locks. You have a lot of problems. You can sometimes go to like minus five if you lower the memory speed insanely much so if you lower it from 2666 to like 1600 you can gain few degrees that you can go to like minus 5 or minus 8 degrees celsius but then you lose so much performance that it doesn't really make sense to do that so that's why we need like a special bios version that allows us to go sub-zero that fixes the temperature sensor we're working on that we will probably do that in one to two weeks once we have the fixed bios version but for now we don't have that so we're kind of limited in temperature, the chiller we would adjust to like one to three degrees water temperature and obviously because we want to have the maximum or the best cooling that's why I picked the XSPC Raystorm Neo which is a uh, yeah, very solid um, water block for the TR4 socket from my point of view and um, we used liquid metal on the CPU. Typically I'm not so much a fan of applying liquid metal between CPU and a water block when the water block is not nickel plated. So the excess PC raised on Neo is not nickel plated. So over time, some of the uh, liquid metal will diffuse into the copper. So it's kind of, it's not really hardening, but it, it kind of is. So uh, we just have to take off the CPU after a few months and reapply a little bit of liquid metal to keep the same performance. Ideally, we would use a nickel plated uh, CPU cooler, but I didn't have one available. Still, of course, we picked liquid metal because we need the best temperatures. Very similar to my previous projects, I built an acrylic box, which you can now see laying on the table. You can see the Dabao logo in front and also an ASUS logo on the side. That's because we will also show this system this year at Gamescom in Cologne. So if you, if you will be at Gamescom in Cologne, feel free to pass by. I will be there the full time. We can just have a chat. You can take a look, a look at the server system, which will be really impressive, which you will see later in this video, because we will again use 3M Novak in the system and that's for several reasons especially to keep the VRMs cold because here you can now see the monitoring of the Elmore EVC and we will perform a test run at 4 GHz. The system is at this status not submerged in 3M Novak and you can see that the VRM temperature quickly ramps up to up to 85 degrees Celsius on one of the phases and that's just too much. I mean, you have to consider that the, the Cinebench run at 4 GHz with 64 cores is extremely quick. It's like 3 to 4 seconds. And even then, the VRM is already heating 85 degrees Celsius. So if we want to perform a longer calculation, we need a lot better VRM cooling. So that's one reason why we picked uh, 3M Novak. 7100 because it has a quite low boiling point 61 degrees celsius whenever the vrm would hit 61 degrees celsius it would just start to evaporate at this point and the components will not reach um, a temperature that's much higher than like 60 degrees celsius under load and apart from the vrm cooling there is also one more aspect which is actually even more important so you have to keep in mind that currently the temperatures here in europe they're they're so insane um, i have like 31 32 degrees in my office at case king um, so there's no AC 
And even with AC, it would not fix the problem because if we, if we want to run the chiller at, let's say, 3 degrees water temperature, we will have a massive amount of condensation water on the block, on the CPU, and especially on the back side of the motherboard. And while we can kind of protect the top part by putting paper and everything to catch all the drops, we cannot really insulate the back side of the mainboard unless we take everything apart, which is not what I wanted to. If we fill everything with Novak, there is obviously no air anymore and there can be no condensation. So it just protects everything that's inside from condensation and any kind of shorts. So after putting the server back into the box, obviously we cannot use the debug code on the backside anymore because we cannot see it. So we used our own debug card, which we will actually sell soon on Case King. I will also keep you updated on this project. It's a kind of universal debug card. You can hook up to any ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, ASRock board. As long as they have the port 80 connector, we made the, um, the debug code universal. So you will also get a manual how to attach it and everything. We will make a, a separate video about that, but it's just a very useful device. We can just hook up to the board. We can place it um, wherever we want and then we can always keep track of the debug codes while powering on the system to see if there's any kind of problem, for example, with memory or VGA detection. So then I started filling the box with 3M Novak 7100 again because I see those comments so many times. Even though you have seen 3M Novak so many times on my channel, it's not mineral oil, it's not electrically conductive, it does not damage anything in there. It's also not hazardous, so no worries about myself. I can just put my hand in there if I want to fix something. It's not dangerous. I mean, obviously you should not drink it, which you wouldn't, but um, as long as you're careful working with this stuff, it's really not dangerous. I first wanted to fill the entire server, but I kind of underestimated yeah, how strong and also how problematic those fans can be. I kind of thought that the 3M Novik would slow those fans down, but you can see once I turn it on, this system turns into something absolutely impressive. And it's also impressive for cooling, obviously, because the fans are pushing the Novik across the PCB, across the memory, so it's cooling the VRM really, really well. Um, the only problem I had was once I filled it too much, it kind of slowed down the fans in the PSU too much. As I said before, no worries about the PSU. The stuff is not electrically conductive, so it's also perfect for the PSU cooling. But the problem is that the PSU is keeping track of the fan speed. And once you slow down the fan speed of the fan too much under load, this, yeah, there's some kind of protection inside the PSU, so it would shut, uh, shut down the system. So for Gamescom, I still have to think about a fix for this problem. So either I just remove the fans or maybe simulate um, the fan speed signal or whatever. So I have to think about that. But for the first test, I just did not fill the server entirely. So the current official Cinebench record listed on HWBot, which is kind of the um, database for official world records, it's 10,084 points. But I also know that there is a video on YouTube showing a Quad Xeon Platinum 8180. So that's 28 cores. Four, four of them, yeah, I mean, one of those CPUs is 10K. So I guess the server price must be some, something like 50 to 60K, which is really a lot. Um, and I saw a video where um, they're performing runs on the system and they always have like something between 9,000 and peak run, I think was 11,500. So I would say that's the fastest I could find. I would say that the official current record is 11,500 overall for Cinebench. And for dual socket, it's a lot less. It's something around 9,000 points. So very similar to the single socket server, we just overclocked the CPU again to four gigahertz at 1.45 volt. Also disabled OCP again with the Elmore EVC. And then we started to perform some Cinebench runs. And the first runs were always like 9,400, 9,500, then slowly building up to 10K. Then we fixed some stuff in the background, we disabled some services, we optimized Cinebench and then kept rerunning and then we ended up at around 10,200, 10,300 points very consistently, which is really impressive considering that the current Cinebench record, as I said before, is done by four 28 core CPUs, Intel Xeon Platinum. The score fluctuates a lot, so it really depends on the individual core speed because the core speed on those CPUs is obviously not stable. But because we can overclock the AMD Epic CPUs, they're always stable at the exact same clock. So also the score and the calculation is really consistent. 
Then we tuned the system a little bit more. We pushed the CPUs to 4050 megahertz and we also set the process priority of Cinebench in Task Manager to real time, which kind of makes it not as beautiful to look at because you cannot see the entire calculation because basically if you set it to real time, all the processes in the background are stopped until the calculation is done. And then we achieved a score of 10,535 points, which is the record for dual socket systems. So this is the fastest dual socket system in the world and it almost beats the Quad Xeon Platinum system. And if you have to, or if you take into account that the score fluctuates so much on the Xeon Platinum system, I would say that the average score on the overclocked Epic system is exactly the same as on the Xeon Platinum. So taking into account that the Epic system costs something like, let's say 12K and the Xeon Platinum 60K, I would say what you get for the money if you overclock those AMD EPIC CPUs, absolutely impressive. Unfortunately, AMD decided to lock down uh, the memory controller of those CPUs, so we were not able to clock the memory higher, so I think we lost quite a lot of performance on that. I think we could have gotten the record maybe, even just with the chiller without liquid nitrogen, if we were just able to push the memory speed higher, which was not possible, but for now, it's absolutely impressive. 10,500 points in Cinebench for, let's say, roughly 12,000 euro. Absolutely impressive. Let's see what we can do once we have the fixed BIOS, once we can go lower in temperature. As I said before, you can see the system live at Gamescom. If you're there, don't hesitate to, to pass by. Maybe we can have a chat about the system or whatever you like to. Enjoy the rest of the day. See you soon.